Yo, welcome to the Speaker Giga Podcast. I'm your host, Steve O'Steve. And I'm the other host, Tommy T. And we got our boy Greg in here. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. Absolutely, man. We got a fun show for y'all today. Uh, yes, we we do. got a special guest. Um, well, Greg, if you would please introduce our special guest for the episode today. Man, okay, this is going to be the best that I can do because this was not written by Izzy herself. I'm going to just tell y'all where I come in. So, like I was telling Tommy earlier before we got on air, I met Izzy doing Dream Fest. I don't know if it was Dream Fest 7 or 8, whatever it was, mm-hmm. through um, back in Memphis before I moved out here to Houston. And like I said, we was rehearsing at the Memphis Slim house, and I'm sitting in there, me and Derek, just kind of vibing and stuff. I don't know if we had already done our rehearsal or what. But she came in and she had, I think one of your boys was with you. I don't know if both of them were there. Mm-hmm. But uh, you started singing and that, that just woke me up, bro. I'm over there like chilling in my own little world on my phone. And I was like, hold up, who is this? And why she <laughs> so small with this big ass voice, bro? Uh-uh. <laughs> so I'm, at that point, I'm tuned in. I'm already a fan <laughs> at that moment, bro. And so uh, just from there, like doing the rehearsals and stuff and just seeing how you work and then knowing the relationship that you got with Tyke, because I got my own relationship with him as well. And so mm-hmm. we kept crossing paths and then we actually got a chance to do Dream Fest. And uh, on that night, I had invited people to the show telling them to see you. Cause I was like, bro, I was like, bro, this this is amazing. Y'all gonna love oh, this. I, I know y'all here to see me and Derek do our little thing, but she got this huge voice. Y'all need to see it, bro. And Thank nobody you. was disappointed, bro. And so, Thank you. Ever since then, I just been a, a big ass fan in the yeah. background, and then y'all was doing y'all's uh, Untouchables videos. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I got a chance to throw out some requests, and y'all honored yes. my request. Yes, we did. Right there, like right by my birthday, bro. I was happy as hell. Yes. I was like, hey, yeah. So, I mean, yep. just a dope singer, dope work ethic. Just always fun to be around. You can see the pink hair, bro. She just as vibrant as she want to be, bro. So, <laughs> That's pretty much what I got. Easy. That before. was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Izzy. <laughs> Thank yeah, y'all, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. We definitely been uh, real excited about this one. I had to go back and listen to um, your songs. I was on SoundCloud and I listened to My Galaxy. I was like, man, this is a really dope song. And then I like your that. voice puts me in the mind of uh, Kiki Wyatt. Like a really, Dang, really okay. right? No, it's a it's a really really big no, I, voice. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And and I love that. So mm-hmm. yeah, I was I was really excited to to actually get into this. Um, I want to just start off by saying what inspired you to actually start singing and and making music and writing. Um, well, to be a, a an original artist, I guess you could say. Uh, it was the day Kaepernick was named the face of Nike. This one out was like, mm-hmm. okay, I need to be an artist. I know I was singing around the city. Um, this guy, Steve Bethany, shout out to Steve-O, he heard me um, sing at a, a, a Chris Edmish, not Chris Edmish, at Sunshine Anderson. Anderson. Mm-hmm. I think that's a name. I don't know. A celebrity person came to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sung behind um, Carmen Hicks and Jerry Richardson. Shout out to them. They some dope Memphis artists as well. This young lady named Carla Barnes. I'm, I don't know if y'all know Carla, but she's real popping. Everybody in the city. And Carla was like my mentor. And she got me on this uh, gig. And so we sung behind Gerald and Carmen. And Steve-O, he was hearing my tone while I was singing background. I never led a song that night, but his ears was like, he was hearing me while I was doing background. Mm-hmm. And he was like, man, you should go to love. And uh, he was like, well, he asked me if I ever thought about singing. And I was like, you know, I sing at church. My dad's a pastor, you know, my whole family. And he was like, you should go to love. You should go to love and audition. And I was like, okay, you know, what's love? He was like, what's love, <laughs> you know? So I went, to the, I went to the club and I auditioned and they liked it and they wanted me to, Stay that night, same night I auditioned, I performed that same night, and they just kept bringing me back. And at first, it was just a hobby, you know, I was getting extra money, it was cool, yeah. fun, I was able to do my thing. But um, I started feeling like after a while, I wanted to be a writer, I wanted to write my own music and come out with original stuff, but I wasn't a writer. 
Mm-hmm. It would take me days, months to write. So I linked up with Type T, my sensei, my nigga, my teacher. He everything. He molded me, really. And I linked up with Tyke and I started, you know, he started teaching me how to write and multiple mm-hmm. some little sessions and stuff. And then when Kaepernick, I was, no, I was doing some little stuff on Facebook, like some little remakes before me and Tyke started doing remakes together. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the lyrics were dope, I ain't gonna lie, but I wanted to be like, felt like I wanted people to cry off my words. Yeah. And so, I, um, after after they named to the face and Nike, I was seeing how all the white people was like cutting up their shoes and their shirts and just the hate for black people. It just enraged me. And so I just sat in my car and I was like, man, I'm finna write something about black people because we the shit. And I, the world needs to know this. So <laughs> <laughs> I got in my car and I sit down. And, wait, is, can I be transparent? I just, yeah, go for it, man. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I was in my car and I got high school. I smoked two blunts by myself. Yeah. And I sat in my car for two and a half hours. It was like 418. So I, I got out the car like 645. And I wrote that to the um Fuji's Ready or Not beat. I'm a huge Lauryn Hill Tupac mm-hmm. fan. And so I chose that beat because I wanted to sing and rap on it. And so I prayed over my phone. Before I uploaded it, and I asked God for a hundred thousand views and a thousand shares, and I think by the end of the week it was at a hundred thousand views. And then when it hit a million views, I was like, "This it, Lord. This where I'm supposed yeah. to be. Like <laughs> you just solidified. <laughs> My artistry was solidified after that. So I just wanted to, I don't know, go further. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what's up, man. That's that's so dope, man. Um, a question that popped up in my head was, um. When you first started to perform, how did you get over the anxiety of getting used to uh, performing? Um, and did you perform your, like, did you have your own songs then, or it was like you was doing cover songs when you first started? Yeah, when I first started, I was just doing live music, live entertainment, you know, at different clubs, lounges, restaurant stuff. So um, I didn't have any original music yet. So I started in 2017. And my first original song, My Galaxy, they mm-hmm. came out in 2018. So at okay. first year, it was just covers and stuff. Um, but the anxiety, there never really was because um, I've been singing since I was four. My, my entire family, we, I just come from music, we church people. Yeah. So I was always on somebody's, in somebody's pulpit, up in somebody's altar singing. Um, I was always in school, all the school talent show, everybody knew. Yeah. Italy was gonna, yeah, Italy was gonna be a part. So I've always sung, you know, I've always sang in front of people. So it wasn't so much anxiety of performing in front of people. My anxiety was trying not to sound so churchy in a secular world. Okay, that's where my anxiety came in, in because yeah. the vibrato and just churchy stuff that you're not supposed to do in R and B. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can, but you know, you gotta balance it out, you know. Yeah. So that was what I had to overcome more than anything was trying not to sound holy on stage <laughs> or going to worship, you know, like right, right. I do praise and worship. Sometimes I will, I, I used to feel like I want to lift my hand. I don't know. It was the weirdest thing. I used to have to try to mask like, bro, you not at church. You got to right. remember this thing that I had. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's I was so- going to say you was lucky for not having that anxiety, but I can't imagine trying to switch over from from one world to the next. Like, that's, that's crazy, man. Right. Yeah, especially being a pastor's daughter, you know, people got these things to say. And my granddad, well, he, he supports me, but he's a traditional, my, he's in his 80s. So, you know, he he said I'd be singing in juke joints. That's what he be telling me. <laughs> so, oh. you know, <laughs> so, you know, trying to yell, switch over, and then you got people, for some reason, the church world, they'll, look at your parents for the stuff that you do. Even though I'm grown, I make my own decisions, you know. Yeah, yeah. They was looking at my mom and dad type stuff. So yeah, it was it was kind of whatever, but I ain't yeah. never gave a damn. So whatever. Uh, kind of going off what Greg said, Greg said something that's so important is having that switch. And a lot of singers in R&B world, most of them, I mean, a lot of singers, period, really start off in the church. Mm-hmm. So, you know, kind of having that switch and kind of having to maneuver between the two. One thing that I always uh, 
that I wanted to ask you was when did you fall in love with R&B? Like, was it, you know, coming from, like you just said, you said you was, uh, you're the daughter of the, pa- you're the pastor's daughter. And I, I know, cause I, some of the pastor's children were some of my best friend. They was like, man, I guess I was the heathen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they were my best friends. So they made, you know, brought me to the house, made sure I was good, whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wasn't that bad. I wasn't that bad. But, you know, <laughs> I know at some point, you know, to sing in the choir is something, uh, something incredible and you have to be in love with that, with that uh, gospel music. But at some point, you know, when you hit that switch, when did you fall in love with R&B? What was that song? What was that time? Like, share that with us. Man, I fell in love with R&B when I was a teenager. Um, when I heard Have You Ever by Brandy, mm. I was like, this is the most beautiful sound I've ever heard in my entire life. Because we we were brought up on gospel music and oldie. My dad is a music connoisseur. Mm. I don't know a song that he does not know. Like, we were young listening to groups like the Silver. Y'all ever heard the Silvers? Yeah. 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 I ain't See, heard Greg Young. Right. No. Greg Young even like, my dad <laughs> had us young listening to folks that a lot of kids probably don't even, you know what I'm saying? But it was never, um, it was always their era, you know, the mm-hmm. Anita Bakers and the Temptation, which I love, but my dad now wasn't up on like the new age R&B, the Monica's, the Brandy's, the Tanks, all of that. Um, yeah. So we really didn't get a chance to hear, you know, the newer R&B. But when I heard, have you ever, I think that's when I fell in love with R&B and when I fell in love with Brandy. And I mm-hmm. wanted to, I don't know, I, I always kind of feel like I wanted to sing. I never wanted to be an artist, but I did used to want to sometimes, you know, sing little secular songs and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I was just always nervous at the backlash. But after I heard Have You Ever, I was like, I can sing this song. And I think she came out with this song when I was like 13 or 14. And I remember, uh, I was like, I could sing this song. Oh, it's such a beautiful song. <laughs> so I was saying my early teenagers, like when I started falling in love, Brandy made me fall in love with R&B for real. Mm. Hey, I, mm. I, I really think Brandy is under like underrated and under celebrated in the R and B world. She definitely, she everything. was, she definitely, yo, she, she. I'm, I don't want to say the word she was. I, she's great. Like, just being honest, she's great. Yeah. Um, I know they Probably had. Hopefully, she is. Yeah, but yeah. her yeah. marketing. I don't yeah. know something weird I, going on. Absolutely, I think that was the problem. Yeah. I think they linked. Uh, a lot with her and Ray J's antics, you know, whatever yeah. he was going through, and I think that hurt her. Mm, and yeah. the, uh, you know, I think and, it was the, the whole accident, the killing thing. Oh yeah, man, I forgot. You about remember that. Nine, right? And you know, but even before that, so see, I'm a huge Brandy fan. So y'all know, Brandy <laughs> has Brandy. She either got pregnant by one gay or had a. No, she didn't have a baby because she only got the daughter serious. Mm-hmm. She got pregnant by one yay or something. And for a while, um, y'all know the guy from where he's from? What group he's Boys from? That's right. Yeah. Look, he's from Oh no. Look, I'm gonna look she, it up. For a, for a while. So have you ever is about one yay, actually. Have you ever oh, okay. is about him? Mm-hmm. And for a while, she was lying. She was You're pregnant. She man. was lying right. because she had this good girl image. You know, she Brandy, she Moesha, she Cinderella, you know what I'm saying? And That's her true. shit ended up coming out and that messed her up. I was re well, I actually watched the documentary about it, but that messed her, that started to kind of like mess her up because mm. she was lying, you know, and then uh, she got back on doing her thing. Then the I mean, the killing happened, the accident or whatever. And it was like, dang, she was messed up again. That's a serious and I just feel like, unfortunate event. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and her marketing, I just feel like they don't, she needs for Olivia Pope. Like, they don't know how to, I don't know, yeah. there's something missing. Vocally, she is too naturally gifted to not right. be an A-list artist, like for real. No, and I don't, absolutely. I won't consider her A-list. She, she talented A-list, but I won't consider her A-list. Man, I, and I'm glad you said all that because that really brought me back. And now I'm like, dang, all that did happen. Yeah. And it's crazy because you you like really forget, you know, like really right, forget right. that all that happened in her journey to where she mm-hmm. where she's at now. Which, man, I really hope she you know gets her just due because uh, you know, she 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 is great. Uh, just she is. yeah, absolutely. So I so I, 
So, so in the Brandon and Monica thing, who did you have? You had you was Team Brandon. You was really, really. Oh dang! You was really I pissed know. off at Monica. <laughs> Monica, I mean, I, I love Monica. She's beautiful, and Monica, fashion and hair, like ain't nobody seeing her. Like she the she the shit. But vocally, she's slightly toned deaf. She's pitchy as all get out. I mean, it's just a big old mess. Man. <laughs> That's a Brandy fan right there. That's I am a not a, fan, I love, I wasn't right. a fan of Brandy, yeah. though. I don't think. Hey, I love both of them. I love both of them. Yeah. We love both of y'all. Y'all keep y'all thing going. Right. Uh, she got so some we, good ass songs. I say absolutely, man. Songs. They yeah. both got some. They both got some them classic records. Mm-hmm. Um. So we we kind of already know that Brandy was like a big influence in, in your career. Uh, would you like to share with us who else was um, who? What other artists or producers were like big influence, uh, big influencers in your career? As you know, saying through your journey to become, you know, saying this amazing R and B star. Um, Layla Hathaway and Anita Baker. I um, mm. I really love them. I want when I get to the platform, I would really love to do a trio song with us three. Um, they they huge inspirations for me, and um. I love Marvin Gaye. I love Marvin Gaye. I love his artistry. I love his vocals. I love his writing ability. Like, he was just everything. Man. And Sam Cooke, I'm a huge fan of Sam Cooke. Yeah. And I was liking Sam Cooke, um, you know, back when he got Cupid, slow down, you boy. Y'all know that song? Yeah. And let, yeah. Come, and then end up finding out that he's our cousin. He's like my third cousin. Oh, you know? wow. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. Okay, we got we got fame in the family. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, uh, hey, yeah. hey! For all y'all that heard it first, she she broke news here first. <laughs> <laughs> we on that news. Yeah, cause nobody right. knows it. <laughs> 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 nobody. And also, my um, I have a cousin who sings now, Kashif. His name is Kashif Johnson, and Kashif uh was a big influence for me before I ever started doing artistry, like singing in the church and stuff. When it comes to all the first cousins. Cause she was like our sensei. Cause she was the singer of the cousins. Mm. All the rest was the same, but this nigga can sing his ass out. <laughs> mm. You know, he. I, I, I've always been a fan of. Cause she's always been a fan of him. Mm. Mm. Man, that's amazing. Yeah. That is mm-hmm. amazing. So, so I, there was something that's very interesting, right? So, Greg. I, so I love to look at how you know what I'm saying like. I believe in like, what is it? It's like three, you know, you're like three degrees separation from like everybody. Yeah. I think that's the same. So it's always yeah, interesting because like right. me and Tommy grew up together, you know what I'm saying? Like this is my, uh, you know what I'm saying? This is, you know, pre- this is my absolute best friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so what, okay, so what, um, so what's so interesting is like, I want to make Greg if Tommy would have never, you know, saying married his married his wife, and the most interesting thing is, I've never met Greg in my life, but Greg has worked with people that I know. So mm-hmm. like I heard you mention like Tyke T, and then he sent me some stuff that you did with Hot Rod. And the crazy thing is, I met all of them at MTSU. So, you know, it, it's one of the coolest things in the world, and I always love it because I always be like, dang, have we ever like crossed paths? So. <laughs> That made me think of, you know what I'm saying, the question why I, I just pretty much want to ask you, like, who are some of your favorite artists and producers to work with? Because, you know, you I've I've seen that you worked with Tyke, and, you know what I'm saying, that's one of my homies, and then Hot mm-hmm. Rod, that's one of my homies. But me, I don't think me and you have ever met. I don't uh, think so. Yeah, I don't think so. It, it, it's weird. But, uh, but yeah, so who are some of your, you know what I'm saying, up until this point, who are some of your favorite artists, some of your favorite uh, producers, that you have worked with thus far? Um, Rod is my my number one main producer. Nobody can capture um, my retarded, weird-ass vibes like, like Rod can. His beats, they just speak to me. Rod makes beats specifically for me. Like, I go to his studio and, you know, we listen to beats that he had in mind specifically for Easy. I can truthfully say that Rod gives me doper beats than he give other artists. And if it's an artist that's watching and you feel the way, this not my problem. 
because <laughs> he rock, like he he likes the way I write. He likes the way I execute the beats and stuff. So rock, he's number one. Uh, for I had I've had a lot of producers that still send me so much trash. Why well, I've turned down so many people, it ain't even funny what it is funny to me. Cause I'm like, why would you send me this? But I got these new guys I'm working with, Nerd Tunes, Kevin Jones, and Johnny Tate. And since Rob, the, the, those two have been the only other producers that can capture, you know, mm-hmm. my emotions and everything. So Hot Rod is number one. And then uh, Johnny and Kate, I mean, Johnny and Kate, Johnny and Kevin. <laughs> Johnny and Kevin, they are um, my number two producers. Uh, I love working with them. And all of them, they let me be free. They give their input. But what I love about them is they let me be free. Like, whatever easy feel like she want to do, we're going to let her do it. Now, we're going to tell her if we ain't, you know, if it sound weird. But they give me free range. And I love that about them. Um, as far as artists, type T. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's like a moment right there, man. That's I have moment. really worked with a lot of... Uh, I haven't really worked with a lot of artists just because of the lane that I'm in. You know, I do more so conscious artistry, like female Tupac type shit, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm conscious about who music I get on. You know, I got to listen to it. And most of the time, it's some shit that I'm not going to even put myself on because I don't mm-hmm. represent it. So it's a lot of people that, you know, whatever. Tight, though. I, I love working with Tight. Now, this girl from L.A., Kimmy Morgan, and this other girl named Lex. We all got a three theme song together and it was really dope. It was really dope. So I like working with them too. But Tyke is like, I want I don't, I don't like doing stuff with nobody really but him because we understand each other. And yeah. if I go off on him, he ain't gonna he understand like this easy. You know what I'm saying? We just got a yeah. bond. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, the stuff you just said is so important. And I hope that any artists that are listening today must understand that it's so important for people to let you be natural. It's mm-hmm. okay to, you know what I'm saying, throw inputs in and to help you through the process, but it's got to be natural because fans are going to read straight through it. They're going to be like, man, yep. she robotic and shit. She just sang Mine. a song, she rolled off of papers and yep. so on and so forth. And like, like I, I used to, man, I'd be around with Hot Rod and I was, you know what I'm saying, like me and Hot Rod was like really like, you know what I'm saying, we was a team at, at, a, at a certain point when he was up here before he uh, went back to Memphis and like, you know what I'm saying, we had folks, we sit up one night have folks all together trying to write hooks and get hooks sent out and, and stuff like that. We was finna build a studio and it, it was it was so cool, man. That's that's one of my homeboys, man. I'm so happy that y'all um man that that not only that he's flourishing, but that I'm getting to meet people that he gets to affect because man, mm-hmm. dude is so special. And I know yeah. for him, if he work with you, you gotta be something special. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> he don't just he, you know what I'm saying? He don't just work with anybody. So mm-hmm. man, that, that's that's big, man. I'm so happy for that, man. Yeah, hey, y- he's dope. Oh man, that that is awesome. That is awesome. I'm gonna let the fellas, man. Y'all got anything, man? Y'all want to jump? <laughs> hey, in? man, I was enjoying the conversation, man. Like, what? <laughs> I'm just wow, like, Thank you, me. Man. That's it. Oh man. I, I, Being a terrible host, that's it. <laughs> Greg ain't no like, terrible host. Just, he just, man. Greg just seemed big, smiling and listening. Right. Oh, right, yeah. Right. right. Yeah, man, see, it's, Greg it's, was there for the ride, so, yeah. well, for a portion of it, so he probably know a lot more than us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, he was. Man, that's, that's like, the one of the coolest things. Like, I'm not a singer, but if God blessed me with vocals to sing, bruh, like, it'll be... I'll be trying to sing to everybody I knew. So <laughs> you heard it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I would, man, but you know, I I know my lane. So, but um the biggest thing for me is performing. You know, mm-hmm. I enjoy doing the podcast and everything like that. And I get to talk to my friends and stuff, but it's still like somewhat of me performing because I'm telling my truth in a medium, in a uh video medium or mm-hmm. audio medium. For you, um, how has this current um, pandemic impacted your ability to perform um, live performances? It, it, it basically completely stopped. Uh, it has impacted it drastically. It has yeah. stopped the money. You know, I've had a few gigs here and there, mm-hmm. um, but like being in the lounges and all this stuff, when they got back open and I had some people talking to me about some stuff, we went right back to phase one. They had to close right back down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it took a it took a lot of money away that was coming in. So I've just been trying to keep myself 
up on it with writing, you know, trying to mm-hmm. steal writing stuff. But it's yeah. it's been awful. I hate this. Yeah. I hate it. And I know people been doing the live things, going live and little live concerts and, you know, get cash out and stuff like that. I was thinking about doing it, but I just never got, I don't know, I never did. But it has messed up, it's messed up a lot. <laughs> Hey, it's still plenty of time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it seems like it's going though. Yeah, like, are y'all still in phase one? In Memphis? They took, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on now. They took us back to phase one, like, I don't know, maybe like some, a month or so ago, maybe. Um, and stuff supposed to be closed down, but Memphis, you know how we are. Yeah. They, people still been there and stuff, and then, so you got the, when they got the curfew, you had some people having events. You know, and near the end, it curfew time. You know, so just like they still doing what they want to do. You know, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't really know. And I love Memphis. What have I what has Memphis. been some of your favorite performances so far in your career for you? Man, love. I, I can't say I have. I'm lying. I got two favorite performances. My first time ever rapping in my six. I've always sang. My first time ever rapping, I was in love. And I did Cardi B, Bodak Yellow. When I tell y'all, I turned that bitch up. They was so <laughs> loud, this shit. Was, y'all, this shit was so loud. I was like, I, I mean, I was all around the club singing that night. I never yeah. forget, I was rapping, walking around the whole club, and everybody, you know, like, it was spectacular. <laughs> yeah. And then I have some friends, Andy and Tony. Um, they call themselves the socialpreneurs, and they do this event here called Top Off Sunday. And um, I sung at that event, uh, and I did, that, that whole night was good. It was really good, but I did Long Walk, Jill Scott. People like to hear me sing Jill Scott, Long Walk. But yeah. this particular time, I don't know what was in me. That joke was so loud. <laughs> everybody, everybody was standing up. All I saw was his cameras and stuff. Like, it was the most awesome feeling ever. So that was my two favorites. Then my two big performances. Mm-hmm. Hey, oh, yeah. so is love a club or night? Yeah. Club? Oh, it is. It's a club. Yeah, it's oh, a really okay. popular club here. All right. You know, so, I ain't from Memphis, but I'm. I'm yeah. It, it ain't in the part of Memphis that you uh, used to going to, bro. That's East Side. Is it? That's uh, that's my stuff for grounds. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look here, I got a partner, man. We came down there one time, man. He took me everywhere but where I wanted to go. <laughs> I'm in the hood, so I like to go to the hood spots, man. He took, I want to go anywhere, like take me to the club, bro. Like I want to see Memphis, Memphis. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like you can take me to like, you know what I'm saying? Like you can take people to the, you know, the commercial spots. Mm-hmm. But then folks were like, damn, bro, you should have went to this place, should have went to that mm-hmm. place. Yeah. I want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to go to, take me to the hood. I'm good, man. Take me to the spots. Uh, I got one homeboy. He drove me through all the hoods. He was like, hey, bro, we, you know, we take this street, man. You're not old, man. We in, we in Memphis, man. That's my dog, man. I miss him. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. I got, hey, <laughs> I like going to them spots, man. But yeah, I had a good time on Bill Street, though, still. Yeah, yeah, wanna, Bill but, Street yeah. Street yeah. Uh, you recently signed to a major label, correct? No. Oh, I signed a distribution. I signed a distribution deal. Okay, gotcha. Through the like, yeah. So oh, awesome. I um didn't want to sign. I've never wanted to sign to a label because I just feel like I didn't want my artistry to be changed. So many people want to compare me to Cardi. You know, I got all the colors and I'm loud. But in all honesty, I'm older than her. I've been doing this shit longer than Cardi has. So <laughs> even though Cardi trying to be like me, I didn't. Shots fired. You got all this shit. All this shit. But right. Hey. So, um, dang, what was I saying? Oh, that you did. You signed. You signed a uh, oh, yeah, distribution right. deal. I never wanted to sign to a label because mm. I feel like they was gonna try to change me. And then I know the type of music I make is not commercial. You know, it's not mm. trashy. I'm not talking about sucking and screwing and, and you know, getting the brick and flipping and all this stuff they yeah. talk about. I'm talking about injustice and social issues and suppressed feelings and, you know, all of this Lauryn Hill 80s type of shit, death mm-hmm. row type of shit that don't nobody really talk about no more, you know. I, I try to, I equate myself to them because they were just so controversial and preachy. They was just going to say how, what they felt. Gotcha. But I know a lot of people now, they be on commercial, but they want the comment. So I never wanted to sign to a label because I feel like that's what they were going to try to turn me into. Mm-hmm. So oh. what Universal did, 
they end up seeing my video on Facebook. It said, um, when they saw it, it was at 6 million views. So their whole thing was, you organically got 6 million views of a video that you did not put ads to. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's and it was like, you it. wrote yeah. it. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, yeah. I still got it in my phone, in my notepad. I wrote it, you know? Yeah. And they was mm-hmm. like, like nobody here know what to know what to do with you, and so basically that's just what it was. Like nobody here knew how to market easy. Nobody here really. It was a lot of folks saying stuff, but they really couldn't help me because they didn't know how to get me to yeah. where I need to be. Because it's like you on some different shit. You know what I'm saying? And so when I was talking to Universal, the guy from Universal, I was very blunt with him. And first, what drew them into me is the fact that I was unimpressed. They had all these plaques on the wall. Like my business manager, he's the guy. He's the execs at Universal. But when I first met him, you know, he got all these plaques on the wall, Jay-Z. Uh, he was really, really good friends with Michael Jackson. He's mm. working with the Jacksons now. He got mm. Cardi B, J. Cole, all these folks. And I was like, okay. And I told him, I said, I don't mean no harm, but you show me out. These are my words to him. I said, I really don't give a fuck about none of this. This is my exact words. I said, I really don't give a fuck about none of this because I can leave about her tonight and never hear from you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I told him. And he was like, damn, okay, like who not hurt you? Like, can you give me a chance, you know? Can you give me a chance? And I told him, I was like, you know, you could look at a video or whatever. I was like, but I'm unimpressed. So he saw the video, he got the phone, he copped his man named Joe Isbro. If you ever go Google Joe Isbro, Joe Isbro is the man. He is yeah. the man. He's uh He's part of the Gambino family. So, you know, the Italians got that money. Mm-hmm, <laughs> and he, mm-hmm. He's described as, his last name is I-S-G-R-O. He's very Thank young. You. And he's Thank described you. as, um, they say that he single-handedly uh, helped the careers of Michael Jackson, Elton John, Madonna, you know. So the guy I met from, from Universal, he calls Joe on the phone that night. He told Joe, he was like, Joe, I got your lady sitting in front of me. I just looked at this video. This girl got six million views. Can I send it to you? Joe, when he had John speak the phone, Joe was like, please do. That's all Joe said. He sent the video to Joe. Joe watched it. Joe texted him back. was like, let's put her to work. It was just that fucking easy. And I've been talking to all these stupid ass Memphis folks that take you through 22 people before you get to the source. And I'm like, I know this shit easier than this. Like, it got to be somebody that can make it. Like, I know. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. And God just said, that whole thing was just set up because when it, it was happening, I was, we were there, I was downtown with my home, we were riding scooters. At the time, she was telling Mike, Mike Dockery is the man from University. At the time, she was telling Mike about me. I was over there by 201 Popular, falling off the school that had scraped my body up. I'm talking mm. about to the white meat, y'all, bleed every, mm. you know, just a kid. I'm some childish ass shit. Mm-hmm. And so exactly she called me, <laughs> she asked me <laughs> to come. She like, I got this guy I want you to meet. You know, so I had to walk in his office all bloody and stuff. So it was just like, that whole night, it was just like, what just happened? So when I left, I'm like, what the fuck did just happen? Okay, he was like, we need to have another meeting with you. And I'm like, okay. So he met with me and my Bobby. Shout out to my Bobby. My manager name is Bobby. Shout mm-hmm. out to Bobby. <laughs> Shout, Shout out, out to Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> yeah, we, he, Bobby and I, we met uh, with Mike because we had several meetings, several meetings before papers were actually signed. So we met with Mike, you know, and we listened to him, whatever. And so my man, uh, Bobby started calling folks because he was mentioning people like Lodi. I don't know if y'all ever heard of Lodi. Lodi's a big producer in, in Memphis. He yeah. helped Jeezy career get back mm-hmm. off the ground. And so he was calling all these names out. So we started calling Connects, trying to, you know, check his story, trying to figure mm-hmm. out, you know, if these Very niggas really legit. Issue. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So we were like, you know, we got back, like, work with them. Like, if they want to work with you, work with them. And I was still keeping it cool. I'm like, okay, whatever. So we went through all of these means. And so he was like, you know, let's work out some terms and shit. And I was like, well, I don't want to sign to a label, Mike, because I don't want to, I don't want nobody to change my artistry. I'm who I am. I'm not changing my hair color. I'm not changing. If I want to wear blue lips, I'm going to have blue lips, you know? And he was like, we like your style. We don't want you to change. He said, what we want you to do is, we want you to sign, sign a distribution deal with us where, where you do a label within a label. He mm. said, so with that, you got full control. So it's an 80 20 deal. And I got full control. Um, they can't make Universal or Bungalow can't make no decisions before coming to me, asking me, am I, I have to approve it. And starting in 2022, I get to sign artists to my own label. So everything worked out perfectly because it's like I didn't have to sign nobody. They're going to put money behind my projects. I'm not taking them their money, putting it in my pocket. 
this money going towards my music. They're going to take this money, put it behind the projects. Put, I've already been on one one show with a lot of artists. Uh, the Jacksons, the Jacksons are doing a farewell concert. Yeah. Just yeah. found out I'm going to be opening up. I'm going to Indiana. Oh, I got to open man, up. You no, know? so. I don't, I don't have to sign. I'm, I'm not to no label. I got a distribution deal. I'm my own fucking label. I'm making yeah, my own thing. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, black people power. What you mean? Like, I ain't, nah. I don't want nobody to sign up for me. And so they were really just, it was like, you raw. You don't care what you say to us. We telling you, we gonna help you. And you still don't give a fuck what you say to us. Like, they was loving it. So like, you friendly. It's like, we want you and you pretty. We want you, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, mm. shit, what's up? And I was still on some player stuff like, this was up, you know, shit, this is up, this works. <laughs> bro, I love Yo. you, bro. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Yo. uh, what you just shared with us, and uh, what you just shared with us is so, like when you when people say, you know what I'm saying, dropping gems, yeah. I don't yeah. I don't know if you know. But you just dropped so many gems for so many artists around the world. Mm-hmm. It's not easy to get a distribution deal straight out the gate and be mm-hmm. like, that's hard. Mm-hmm. Like, that's hard. And um, for you to be able to do that, not only do that, but so that, you know, keep your image, do what you want to do, have mm-hmm. a distribution deal, tell them straight up, hey, man, because cause you could have signed and then just been another artist on the show. Right. And the right. fact that they actually came around and said, we don't know what to do with you was very important. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to say thank you because you just shared so much for so many artists around the world that need to know something. And mm-hmm. that's something that you don't always get. You got a lot of people that jump, you know, once they get to where they at, they're like, oh, man, you know, this, this and that and the third. But you gave it to us straight. You done gave Chase. us your whole journey. <laughs> And like, like that's that, to the up, uh, fall yeah, off, man. Off of the <laughs> and, and that's so special. Hey, that's special because I, I done been a, been a part of labels and, and stuff like that. I used to rap back in the day, so on and so forth, and seeing people what they were looking for and not mm-hmm. being able to do this and saying you can't do this, but you just really broke, broke the mold and probably gonna change the game. Um, uh, so keep doing what you're doing, you keep understand? Doing it. Keep yes. doing it. But that's gonna be something amazing. And I am so ready to see where, where it ends up at. Yeah. Thank y'all. Definitely, man. Definitely. Um, Greg, did you want to jump in? Man, I was just gonna say, speaking of changing the game and, and seeing where you're going, bro. Like, what do you see yourself going in the next, you know, two, three, four, five years? What do you see the easy brand looking like? Man. I have so many visions. I just see it being enormous and shedding light on artists. My goal, people who I sign to the label, they're going to be kind of like me, shedding light on people who are fearless, people who actually got a message. Like, that's what I want the brand. That's why I'm, I'm naming my, my label is named Higher Nation. And that, that um, yeah, I'm just going to keep walking. They're just going to keep walking. Y'all see yeah, <laughs> they're gonna be on YouTube. Just let them know, <laughs> right? <laughs> we can they uh, that that name is actually the name of my father's church, mm-hmm. and so um, I at first I was like, I didn't want to. I love the name. I've always loved that name, and I was thinking, I was thinking about names and stuff for the label because I wanted it to represent what I wanted the brand to be, and I was at first. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and use it, and I decided I'm gonna clean. Like I'm not gonna curse in my music anymore. It's gonna be profane free, and so um, I wanted to. I want. I wanted my label or my brand in the next few years to show like a higher nation. I'm on a higher mental. I'm on a higher spectrum. I'm on a higher dimension. I think higher than the rest of y'all. I write higher than the rest of y'all. My visions, my prayers, all of that is higher than y'all. Y'all come, and I'm an anomaly. Y'all, I'm, I'm not like y'all. We, we not the same. We in different lanes. And and I call my, my people Easy Nation. So we, it was perfect. Higher Nation. So mm-hmm. that's what I want my brand to be like. Shit, we on a higher elevation, you know, than everybody else. Like, I've been watching Death Row Chronicles. I don't know if y'all seen it, but I've been watching Death Row Chronicles. And mm-hmm. they are what I would love 
not without the kid and the shit. But just the way, <laughs> just the way that the way them they were all elevating, and every every single artist on the label, all of them, they were people that was spitting real shit, had messages, and they were all top ass fucking artists. Nobody who was you know whack or no shit. Everybody was like, you really don't know who to pick because they all were just so powerful. Yeah. And that's what I want the Easy Brand to be like. Easy and everybody to come behind her like them folks powerful. They talking about shit. They waking us up. That's what I want my brand. We gonna, I'm gonna wake y'all up. Y'all need to see because it's so much shit hiding in plain sight and folks mm. are fucking blind. I'm like, y'all stupid as shit. Y'all need somebody that's gonna help y'all for real. Like the world is crazy to me. It's so bandwagon. So I'm playing off of that. Well, since everybody wanna be on a bandwagon, well, okay, me. Y'all come and join my bandwagon. Mm. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to, I just wanna, I just wanna, my brand to, to show growth for real. Growth and freedom. That's what I want it to be. I heard that. Yeah. It's, it's goddamn. It's like whenever, whenever you start to talking, it's just like you just let like uh Steve said, the gems just freely flow. Right, right. Like, <laughs> you just fall out. Like you don't even know them just coming out. You're like, you can keep <laughs> that right there. You need to put that hoe out there right there. Right. But you just letting them just go, bro. I appreciate that, man. Right? Yeah. Thank I appreciate God. the the authentic I, the you. authenticity, yeah. You, you know, it's, it's certain words that I struggle with. That's one of them. But uh, I appreciate that, man. Um, because you know, so many times as a fan of music, I'm sitting up here. I'm just thinking about the correlation between everybody up here, and I'm like, I'm the fan. You know what I'm saying? So, as a fan of music, you appreciate somebody being real to you. Mm-hmm. You know, when you mm-hmm. talk to them, when they're when they're presenting their music and everything like that, mm-hmm. so I want to say thank you for that. You know, no problem. Um, Thank you. <laughs> For real. Like just, just kind of like doing the research about you and everything. I, I had no doubt that's what we was gonna get. So, um, we really do appreciate that. Um, before we go, I want to ask you to where can we find you? Where can um, you know, where can we see your your work and everything like that? Would you give us all of that info? Yes. My um, Facebook is Easy the Songstress. The is spelled T-H-A. And my IG is dope underscore ass underscore easy. Dope ass easy. And so those are my um, social medias. And my music is on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple, Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime, I think Type said. Oh, yeah. Google Play. It, and then it's on a whole lot of other stuff I never even heard of, like Deezer and I don't know, some stuff that I don't know about. It's on yeah. a lot of stuff. <laughs> I think some people put Everywhere. some stuff on YouTube. Yeah. I, I, got a, I got a YouTube page that I really don't utilize. But it's some stuff on YouTube that I've seen some other people put up on of me, you know, too, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Well, like I said, I want to thank you for being a part of Speaker Geekers podcast, being a guest on our show. We really Thank y'all for having me. Absolutely. We really do appreciate it. And uh, you Thank know, y'all for letting me be so transparent and open. Oh, for I sure, love man. interviews like this. I hate having to be like. No, for sure, man. It's right. like, you got to say what you got to say, man, and get it out there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather you do that than, than try to make up something. I'm a terrible liar, so I try my best <laughs> to tell the truth. Yeah, I can't lie either. I start like, laughing. I forget what I lied about, man. So, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm awful, man. But um, but thank you guys for listening to another episode of Speaker Geekers podcast. Um, if you haven't already, please go subscribe to the channel. Um, follow us on Instagram at Speaker Geekers podcast, Facebook at Speaker Geekers podcast. You can find me. On Instagram at I am Tommy T the third D A three R D, and uh, you can find Steve at on Instagram at the great Steve O Steve. Yeah, <laughs> D A, not a T A great D-A. Steve O Steve, mm-hmm. and also you can Duh. find Greg. Greg, what's your Instagram, man? Man, it's at instantly underscore G, bro. Instantly That's it. underscore G, and there, there it go. is. Um, once again, thank you. Izzy for being a part of the show today and no uh, you guys go follow her follow her music um she's uh she's doing big things man dropping gems in the in the podcast today so we appreciate it and uh that's all I got man Steve what else you got hey man 
What's up? Hey, hey, I told What's y'all, me? man, we got to do this Memphis episode, man. Right, hey, it's coming. It's yeah, coming. Hey, man. Tennessee, hey, coming. Memphis, hey, I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Hey, if you sleeping on Memphis, man, man hey, you asked <laughs> up, nigga. Yeah, yeah, Wake hold up. How about that? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to say that. How about it? Shoot. Where are you, where are you at, Steve? <laughs> I'm in Nashville, but I'm originally from Chicago. Nashville, okay. Oh, I yeah. love Nashville. Oh, well, shoot. Next time y'all in, next time you in town, holler let us. We'll be yeah. around. Yeah. The time in Atlanta, so you won't see yeah, me. It'll yeah. just be me right around. You in Atlanta? Yeah. I got to come there, too. I, I've sung, I've sang at um, uh, Nashville, and those people, they were so sweet. They were about to pull me off the stage. It was so awesome. They yeah. got real good vibes. But yeah. Atlanta, I have not been there too yeah, soon. You got to come down. Yeah, Let I heard you. Let us know, man. We'll be out there. Yeah. Oh, um, Greg, you got anything? I ain't got nothing, man. I'm just, I'm really, really appreciative, uh, Izzy, that you responded when I hit you up, man. <laughs> Always, you my nigga, bro. Yeah, we man, love I, you. I knew you. I knew you was gonna respond and shit. I wasn't <laughs> doubting it. I'm just saying, I'm just glad that you was able to do this, man. Cause it's supposed to be busy, bro. So I'm just glad you was able to fit this in. Bro, I had, we had to put the kids outside. I said, I, I just, <laughs> <laughs> it's a right. part of life. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, guys, I think that's everybody. So um, go check us out. And uh, yeah, I'm out, man. Peace. Peace. Bye.